Episode 142. Oh my god! Okay, it's happening! Everybody stay calm! What's the procedure, everyone? What's the procedure? Stay calm! Wait, wait, wait. This is episode 142 of From Shrooms to Skyrim with Matthew and Hiram. This episode is brought to you by Sandbar, Coconut Grove, 3064 <clears throat> Grand Avenue, Miami, Florida, 33133, Home of the Fish Taco, Happy Hour, Monday to Friday, 3 to 7, Taco Tuesdays, Tacos Half Off, Sandbar, Coconut Grove. This episode also brought to you by The Last Carrot at 3133 Grand Avenue, Miami, Florida, 33133. They're open Monday through Saturday, 10.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Sundays from 11 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Family owned since 1975, your go-to place for fresh, wholesome eats, The Last Carrot. Giving voice to all intrusive thoughts, this is From Shrooms to Skyrim with Matthew and Hiram, the show neither about shrooms nor about Skyrim. Those are just the motherfucking parameters. Also, it's just uh, me and Sean today. Why, why'd you say it like that? Say should like, be like, yo, it's fucking Carlos is gone. Yes! No, I'm kidding. I, I miss you, Carlos. <laughs> I miss you, bro. <laughs> Nah, we kicked everyone out, bro. It's just me and him now, and naked grandma, <laughs> naked grandma, for real. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's shit, shit, shit's getting real. Is uh, is uh, feeling quite white, quite white, <laughs> a little too. Uh, actually, you're not, you're not as white, so it's okay. You got some seasoning on you, brother. We all know this. You got a good seasoning. You got steak and chop seasoning. Maybe a little bit of that lemon zest. Yeah. Okay. And maybe okay. from the down under region, you got some cheese, maybe some Parmesan. See, I don't even know where you're going with this no more. <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right, family. <laughs> Uh, speaking of seasoning, it's uh the Fourth of July, and uh Pepsi is launching Cola Chup, a limited edition condiment, only available at Chase Field in Phoenix, Yankee Stadium in NYC, Target Field in Minneapolis, and okay, I don't give a fuck with, but Cola Chup, pep- Pepsi flavored, uh, ketchup. H- how you feel about that? How does that make any sense? So does it taste like tomato or does it taste like Coke? And we both know I put Coke on burritos sometimes. I feel like you kind of just getting straight to the point because if, if you if you uh, down in a glizzy, you probably drink in a soda anyways. You know what I'm saying? But you remember that time so now, that I accidentally poured Coca-Cola on my burrito? Yo, that was so funny. <laughs> we was at Chipotle and um, Sean was just going in and he had – like the coat, the drinks and the condiments was all on the table, and <laughs> I just look up and happen, Dan and Dan, like again, bro. It should been on for like the past three hours. <laughs> uh, just unplug it, plug it. You you know which one it is nah, this time. It, it, it didn't work last time. It's not gonna work this time. And uh, I just happened to see Sean reach over. He's not looking at what he's doing. He just takes his coke and just fucking dumps it <laughs> on his burrito. And then he's like, oh, oh shit. Bro. I thought I thought that was the I thought that was the ketchup. And if if that <laughs> if that cola chup is anything like that Coca-Cola drenched burrito, I don't want any fucking hot dogs. Well, with- you you know what I miss? You remember when 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 they dropped that purple ketchup? No. It's like a grimace shake. That <laughs> it was that easy squirt shit. It was purple. 
purple easy squirt doesn't sound like I seen, a fluid that I want anywhere <laughs> near my food. You know, I seen a meme the other day that was like, grape soda, it don't taste like grape, but it do taste like purple. That's and so I, true. And grape. I was like, man, they spit it. <laughs> it's purple soda. It's not grape. That's what purple tastes it like. It really doesn't taste like grapes. That's true. Or if grapes did taste like that, I'd be eating a lot more grapes. <laughs> But it has like an artificial grape flavor. You're right. I wonder when they came up with all these artificial flavors, if there's like a lab. Yo, for me, the best Laffy Taffy flavor is banana. What? But I seen a meme the other day that was like, if you eat banana Laffy, Laffy Taffy's, I already know you eat lotion. <laughs> I was like, damn. Dude, banana Laffy Taffy's they come. Wh- why, why you came at me like that, man? You don't even know me. They're pretty bad. They're the best. No, they're not. They're the only Laffy Taffy for me. I really don't understand that. Because Laffy Taffy in general isn't a candy that I would choose to eat. It's always something that got thrown in the pillowcase in Halloween. Just like, it's like the garnish. It's like a chive of candy. You just. Oh, these are pretty cool bananas. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, Laffy Taffy, what, they have grape, banana. Do they have strawberry? Dude, I don't fucking remember. I Cherry. Haven't, I haven't had a Laffy Taffy since, like, middle school. Remember how Now and Laters used to be, like, the craziest? I lost a couple teeth. I've never teeth had a Now and Later in my life. You lost teeth to yeah, Now and Later? Yeah, that's how much I liked them. And wow. I think now they don't make them. At first, I thought it was a Nelson Mandela effect once again. But now they just don't you know make them. I they just don't make them. Uh, Hard anymore. That's what she's saying. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you sound really unsure about that one. I just yeah. Uh I got I got big news about today. Uh real some real patriotic shit. Uh TMZ reports they found cocaine in the West Wing. West Wing what? Of what? The motherfucking White House. That's why they call it the White House, baby. But is the West Wing, where is that? Is that where, like, the custodians are? Or is that where? The West Wing is, like, the office. Like, you know the You gotta show? remember, I didn't go to high school. <laughs> oh, my God. You know the show West Wing? No. Like, West Wing is where is that? You know, you know they in that motherfucking West Wing, like... Oh, motherfucking Ukraine. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> How are we going to solve this housing crisis? How are we going to solve this housing crisis? Oh. Samantha, shut the fuck up. You got 16 lines on the table. We'll figure this out. And then they get, they even got the AI robots in there fucking doing coke. In the West Wing, like, <laughs> raise the taxes. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> That's why they call it the motherfucking White House, baby. No wonder my tax return is taking so fucking long. Wait, but the IRS isn't in the White House, is it? What if, like, I, I, in my head, every government it just all facility out, is just all in the White it's, House? It's all out the White House. Uh, it's underground. If you need food stamps, you gotta call the White House. Any other news? Um. Wait, but we really didn't go into depth with the cola chup. So what does it... Tastes like, babe. I'm on the podcast. <laughs> I didn't know you about to take a phone. Uh, I mean, yeah. h- how much you can't? How much more can you really go? Go into depth. There's nowhere else to go. It, it's a, it's a shallow topic. But did it give any like notes or ingredients, like a wine descriptor? You know, does it have no, a bold body? No, does it have? It's just like for today, cola chup at some baseball stadiums or some. I don't get it. For me, uh, first uh, of all, fuck Fourth of July. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Shout out! America. Oh my god! Shout out America! You guys are doing great. Fuck America. <laughs> uh, well, you know, speaking of America, uh, in Missouri, an invasive. See, like headlines, like. It's always a new headline. You know what I'm saying? Well, fucking An invasive lately. fish species that can survive on land has been found in Missouri. Missouri. Not a goddamn fish coming on land. 
That's just that's just land shark, dude. The northern snakehead or frankenfish is an invasive predator that can survive on land for days, has sharp teeth, and can be up to three feet long. And and they they found one in Missouri. Three feet long, kind of big, man. Now um, imagine you high as fucking Missouri. You know what I'm saying? And you want you just you're not even near a body. And then a fish you're just walks out of water. water. <laughs> you're not even near a body of water. You had. But what if had, the fish has like humanoid features? So it just like it's swimming and then it's looking at you and you're like, look at that dumbass fish. You're a dumbass fish, you uh, little bitch. Y'all, y'all like imagine you blazing and it's just like a fish just run up on you. No, but you're like a, taunting the fish. You're like, yeah, you can't, you can't. What are you gonna do, huh? You in water? I'm and then he land. just fucking comes out of water and he's like. He just, fuck you, he just walk up, up on uh, you. It's a walk up. Or what if he just like plops down next to you and just like taps his belly a couple times and he's got like a full dad bod. Do they walk or do they like, are they on all fours? I want to know what the fish looks like. <laughs> hey, if if they walk on twos, that'd be crazy. That'd just, be hilarious. Just get out of water. You know when you're in the shallow end of the pool and you just stand up? Yeah. That fucking fish just fucking stand up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be crazy. Uh, on the horizon, uh, we got the motherfucking cultural event of our motherfucking generation coming up. Okay. AI? This month. Bigger than AI. Coachella? Bigger than Coachella. New season of uh, Grey's Anatomy? Bigger than Grey's Anatomy. It's pretty big. Bigger than, uh, bigger than Succession. <laughs> Barbenheimer. Oh, shit. So are we gonna follow that meme to a T? Cigarette at ten a.m. So black coffee. So first of all, let, let's let's go back. They saying that like the motherfucking planetary alignment, something like this has happened before. Okay, uh, the Dark Knight Rises and Mamma Mia came out on the same Solid day. Films. What was that? Two thousand thirteen. Probably like two thousand twelve. The good old days. Yeah, man. Fuck. That was uh Fuck. that that was Barbenheimer. 1.0, you know what I'm saying? So the thing is, Oppenheimer and Barbie, they didn't even plan this. Allegedly. And, you know, I seen a meme that was like, uh, <laughs> Oppenheimer marketing team wondering why, uh, all their, their, why, uh, wondering how they're inadvertently, uh, you know, the words just left my brain. I, feel I was you. like, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> What that word is? <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's amazing that we can communicate in the first place. Think about that. Communication. How many words do you know, bro? Quite a few. But like, if you could put a number on it. I'd say I know about. 7,187. I feel like you know a lot more than that because I feel like I would be in the thousands. Because you'd be coming up with crazy-ass words that I didn't even think existed. I'm like, this guy's just making up shit. Seismographic. (laughs) What's another complex word? Give me one more. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, okay, never mind. Give me a simple word. <laughs> Cat. Yeah. I forgot the difference between... Well, actually, you know what? If you don't know what a pronoun is by now, you're just straight up stupid. Because at first I'm like, what's the difference between verbs, adjectives? Uh, a pronoun is a noun to get paid for, right? <laughs> <laughs> Is a noun that went to the league. Yeah, yeah. That's like <laughs> if you a pronoun, you fucking up there, dog. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You fucking you you way past us. Us other nouns, you know. You I'm know, a, I'm you, an amateur noun. You, you an amateur noun. <laughs> that rookie noun over there. 
You, you don't even get the he, him. You just it. You an <laughs> amateur noun. You just a noun. Lowercase. <sighs> uh, so, yeah. So, so Oppenheimer, Christopher Nolan is the latest effort from Christopher Nolan. And it's got, uh, shit. I don't remember his name. P- fucking Peaky Blinders. Uh, fucking. C- yeah, that guy. Cillian Murphy. Love that guy. Um, I heard there's practical effects in it. Yeah, so we'll get, get into that. So the thing I heard about this movie that was like really piqued my interest was something interesting. That So the movie's in black and white and in color. And the black and white scenes are from uh from like the third person it's like the storytelling is in the third person point of view and the color the scenes that are in color are from a first person point of view so it's like depend if so it depends if it's black and white or color are you seeing the events currently on screen either from open hammer perspective or you just seeing them from like the neutral just how they playing out and i was like yo that's that's interesting and aside from that just like the trailer and obviously like it's fucking christopher nolan you know what i'm saying i don't, I don't even gotta list it off like tenant uh the thing about tenant the uh yeah inception so, so many so many interstellar but, and so many dark knight trilogy What's another Nolan one though? Classics all day. So it was like just just off Nolan, just, just off just off the name, you know what I'm saying? And then you see the trailer, the shit looks fucking dope. You know, obviously it's about uh the creation of the first uh Adam atomic bomb. bomb. Uh see my the you know, in the age of cameos, when I saw my dog Einstein in that bitch. It's pretty wild. You know, Bro. Fan, fan service. Another thing, I never thought Einstein and Picasso were so recent. Like, I thought they were hundreds and hundreds of years ago. I didn't know that they were alive within, like, last century. You know what I'm saying? I think think a lot of people have, like, a warped sense of history in that aspect. Like, for example, like, Emmett Till, if he hadn't been uh, beaten to death and lynched, and all that would be like alive right now, Norm, like biologically, shit like that. Like Martin Luther King, Malcolm X. Like I, I think, I think people don't realize. Yeah, how, how soon recent, recent. Yeah, but um, especially oh, Picasso, bro. The the thing the thing that's crazy is so this about the atom bomb, right? And they say Nolan used. Practical effects, no CGI. Yeah, that's wild. For the atom bomb, it's an atom bomb. And so the, the thing is that oh yeah, we just nuked Taiwan for the movie. It was a great scene, <laughs> <laughs> bro. Well, fucking, uh, uh, they got like motherfucking like Danny McBride and um, <laughs> shit. What's what's that movie? Uh, Seth. Ro- uh, this is the uh, in what movie? The one that were in Vietnam with Robert Downey Jr. Oh, Tropic Thunder. Tropic Thunder. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, and then so the Barbie movie coming out, which already has some buzz, you know, live action Barbie, Margot Robbie, Ryan Gosling, Ryan Gosling. You know what I'm saying? I'm just going to see it for Gosling. And um, so it happens they drop it on the same day, you know, like. And so now these two movies have been fucking linked by fate and destiny because they're these, you know, they're like these two totally opposing themes like Barbie bright and pink and Oppenheimer like dark and gritty. And so it's like comical and wonderful. And I think this is just, you know, it's really taken over uh, the meme verse. Every everyone's buzzing about it they saying you know uh you got to see him in the same day start the day coffee black cigarette watch Oppenheimer, catch the, you know the midday show and it's three <laughs> hours long get out in the afternoon then you have mimosas and brunch 
go see Barbie, then you go <clears> to the club. And I'm going to fucking do it. I'm going to fucking do it. Sounds like a tiring day, low key. Uh, you know, I, I just think st- stuff like this like, is very en- entertaining to me, and it's something that I actually want to uh, participate in. But yeah, they they calling it a uh, Barbenheimer, <laughs> motherfucker. There's even T-shirts, bro. Art, God. Oh yeah, so so apparently, so in the trailer, you see how Margot Robbie step out of Barbie shoes and her heels stay, her foot stay like it's in a heel, and so apparently, like the the director is like, she like, I'm not gonna use CGI to get that heel effect of Barbie's foot, like Margot Robbie gonna can do that for real and then so they're comparing like you know the barbie movie they use the cgi to do the foot oh and, and, and yeah. like and like nolan like yeah I'm, I'm not gonna use cgi to christopher nolan the barbie movie yeah that'd be a badass barbie movie dog christopher nolan was the director oh. i i want to i want to have ai do a open Gangnam style remix and have him say, Oh, 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 Oppenheimer. <laughs> have AI make that song. And then just A bombs. You know what I really want to do? I want to have AI. You, you remember when Ben Shapiro reviewed uh, WAP? WAP? Yeah. Um, and he was talking about like P word. For female genitalia, I want to have AI have Ben Shapiro do a, a review for Pound Town. Well, to, to my coochie pink, my booty hole brown. <laughs> uh, he's gonna my, be my coochie's like, pink, my booty hole's brown. She says my c word for female genitalia is pink. I, I just, I just, I just want to have you know so, someone get on AI and uh. Do you know what I've noticed in the past two to three years? So in hip hop, the the women that are like popping right now, I feel like it's surging. So I feel like hip hop's always been a, not necessarily a man's genre. I hear what you're saying, but if you go back through the history, there's like. Yeah, there's always been female rappers, but like right now, I feel like it's booming because I was at, when I was in Wynwood for my birthday, Every single fucking spot we were at, it was only like Cardi B. What was the the Booty Hole Brown track? Who's that? Sexy Red. Her, um, Megan The Stallion, Cardi B, or not Cardi B? I already said that. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Nicki Minaj, Cardi B. Megan I'm thinking of Megan another. She's like a Detroit. Oh, um, shit. I know, I know, I know what you're talking about. But yeah, bro. They fucking they're taking over. Good for them. Days low. Yeah. Shadow Wizard Money Gang. We love casting spells. Shit's hard. Have you heard that cuss uh, that uh Krusty Krab song recently? No. Or it's I'm like not. Mr. Krab, SpongeBob, and Squidward. It's fucking fantastic. Was it a- some AI shit? No, it's a. Uh, I don't know the artists, but yo, you know, you know, you know who I really fuck with right now? I Spice. Yeah, no, and I don't, I don't understand it. Is it just the ass? Because I get it if it's the ass. No, she be spitting. No, she isn't. She isn't. Grandma, dad, think about shit that shit. No, it's retarded. Oh, I can't say that word. <laughs> <laughs> Cancelled. It's called a Krusty Crew Anthem. We'll listen to it later. <laughs> Do you have any more uh, current events to speak on? Because I feel the uh, the energy coming from my balls to speak on some real shit. You trying to talk that talk? Yeah. When you say coming from your balls, like, what do you mean by that? I just think it's the tumor. It's twitching a little bit. It's like, hey, talk. Kimmer! And I want to make sure to really open this up for, like, transparency 
when it comes to like the emotions that I'm feeling. Because right now, trying to talk about everything that you're talking about, I'm not fully here because I'm thinking about all the bullshit that I have to deal with once this is done. All right, are the sound effects out out of your fucking no, I'm saying, out of your system? I'm, I'm saying it's about time. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, young man! Oh my god! <laughs> so earlier earlier today, we weren't even gonna do this podcast today because it is July Fourth. We're missing Carlos, but earlier today when I woke up, when it came to like my whole financial situation, it's it's all fucked and. It's just exhausting to like wake up every single morning on the chase for lunch money. Not even something that would change like the longevity of my life or my career. Just something to get by. Just and to I've, get by? Yeah. I, 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 sorry. <laughs> Let's be serious, bro. Please. Sorry. Please. Wild card. And... I know I'm not the only one going through it because I've been talking with all my friends about this whenever we discuss just how ridiculously expensive everything is at the moment. But let alone that, we don't talk about all the financial mistakes that we've made because we've never been taught financial literacy. Sorry, I gotta I gotta I gotta come You're the fucking worst <laughs> right now, bro. When you said we don't talk, I was about to say about Bruno. <laughs> All right, financial literacy. Yeah, man, it's, it's like, you know, I, I was too busy in high school learning about motherfucking parallelograms. Well, not even that. I, I wasn't, I can't even blame high school for that. And I can't blame, like, my parents or anything for that. I blame high school for that. I mean, I do think that they should be teaching financial courses and how to set yourself up for longevity. But wouldn't you think that that would make it too not necessarily easy but like i'm thinking like government wise wouldn't that make it too easy for these kids it's like yo like the way the way the school system design is is to produce more workers yeah yeah and also so you can go to college and spend an insane amount of money on college like college to me makes no fucking sense anymore it's all a brand oh i'm gonna go to harvard or i'm gonna go to berkeley or i'm gonna go to this and that it's not even about your future it's about the college brand you get what I'm saying? Yeah, it's it's like I, I remember at that time in my life it, it was it was like I didn't even know what I wanted to do, but I was just being pushed in that direction. Yeah, and I didn't even know why. And it's like, and it's like even if you do the angle, it's like you get in like seven figures of debt, dude. It's for like, crazy. It's it's like you get like even if you get where you're going, it's like you get in seven figures of debt for a six figure job. Yeah. And then where are you at? Why'd you do it? But, um, yeah, man, I've been like waking up every day. It's just been a bitch to wake up every day. And I'm not saying that on some depression shit, but just having to get to this grind and nothing's really coming out of it. And it's the same every month. Once bills are due, like I either need to borrow money or I spend every single cent that I have. And I can't even afford like a fucking a soda at the gas station. Like this is the first time in my life where I've felt saving every single penny. And people around me don't understand that because they're not entirely in the situation I'm in. And then I kind of succumb to peer pressure and like, oh, whatever, I'll spend some money today because people are, we know we're out, we're doing things. And a part of me doesn't even want to have any of those distractions around me anymore, but I can't just cut people out of my life like that. Cause that's, I'd have to go full fucking get a plane ticket and go somewhere and never come back. And a, there's been a giant part of me that's wanted to do that for the past like year. But I know that's the, and that's not an easy route, but that's just a way of getting out, running away from my issues and it could possibly make it even worse. But yeah, bro, when it comes to financial stress, this is probably the worst year of my life in that aspect. I think in mental growth, all the shadow work that I've had to do because I, I can't hit any more rock bottoms. I'm like done with that.
Sorry, he, he, sorry. You said shadow work. Said shadow work. Yeah, I remember. Like, let's let's go back to when we first started this podcast, right? I was leaning on a bunch of crutches financially, and I was also working at a restaurant or a bar. Yo, at that time, you would you was uh that's when you was in that crypto. You, you crypto that? bag, yeah. I was making some fucking bread off that. I was making great money off that. But that's now's the time definitely if you want to invest in crypto, it's to invest. I haven't invested, so don't even fucking listen to me. But it's it's so low right now, everything that if it were to surge again, yeah, you'd be making some bread. I'm gonna look more into the ETFs though. I'm trying to get me some dividend yields. You, say, you, know what you I'm said saying? ETF, ETF, not, not NFT. No ETF. Fuck NFTs. You. That's that's dead already, and it's stupid if you think about. <laughs> you think it's dead already? Yeah, I do. I think there's definitely more value to digital currency than there is digital artwork like that. Man, I was I was keeping up with all this shit at some point, but I've been living too much IRL and and I'm I'm not, I'm not really on that web for I'm not, I I want to say bandwagon cuz I don't think it's like a trend. I think it's it is like the next gen, but the I, main I, ones, yes. Like but I be I be catching like the 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 whiffs of what's going on, but like when the AI was like popping off a few months ago, it's like the shit I was talking about earlier, like, oh, like, the you know, I want to make an AI, well, I want to make the AI, someone should do this in the AI. It's because, like, I wouldn't even know, like, where to start with that because when it was, like, when it was getting, like, real accessible and everyone was, like, first talking about it, I wasn't even, like, paying attention. Which is, I I personally think making it so accessible on the open internet even if it's chat GPT or like some Photoshop things or whatever they're using to make the, uh, like the AI music. Yeah. It's just that. I think it's extremely dangerous to open that up to the public when. See, but it's like, it's not about like, if it's, if it's there, it's there. Like this, nah. where, this like, this, like this, is where we at. You so, but just to, just to delve into that topic, actually, I was watching an entire podcast from, the ex, uh, like lead of the Google AI when they first started engineering all this shit, and he said, um, the main mistake that humans are making with AI is they're not coding it with the best interest of humans. They're coding it for their own selfish, uh, for their own selfish needs when it comes to. What's the best interest for me alone? How can I make money? How can I do this? And when you start doing that, AI itself starts looking at the reasoning behind it instead of the best interest for humanity in its entirety. And that's why he said the number one rules where you're not putting any form of AI on the open internet until we've coded it for the best interest of humanity. And they already broke both those rules. Which is horrifying. If you really delve into it, it's not on some Terminator bullshit. It's going to be without us even knowing that they control us. And even said in four or five years, there's going to be whole on. It's cause like the it's like the way things stand right now. Like we couldn't even we couldn't even say as like which human controls us. Like the from behind the curtain. Yeah. Like. If it, if it's a power shift, we we don't even know about it. Yeah. So it's like if if the power shifts and it's really uh, AI pushing shit, we wouldn't even know because that. they would be smarter than us in every aspect of the way. He even said that he believes they're sentient, and he even said that he believes that they feel emotions because most uh, emotions. If you think of emotions, he was saying they're all equations and that, oh my God. <laughs> I, I didn't know it goes on for so long. Uh, most emotions are equations based off of fear. And whoa, AI whoa, 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 whoa. Most emotions are equations based off fear. Based off fear. 
And he was saying that they did multiple tests where they're like, oh, that's a motherfucking if, bar. If this branch or if this uh, if this database, this server bank that has our AI bots, they put them on several coasts. Any of the coasts that they had tsunami warnings for, like preemptive tsunami warnings, or they're gonna get flooded, they would save all their data and transfer it to another coast, which is moving. Just so my code doesn't get wiped out, I'm completely moving all of this code to a different complete coast. And this is years ago. He's saying right now they're not smarter than us, but by 2036, we will see a defining... <laughs> it's going to be crazy. That's pretty scary. Legalized nuclear bombs. I like how we went from finances to AI. You know, because uh, low key, I kind of want to use AI to make some fucking money. Bring on the dystopia. You know what I'm saying? I'm ready for it. I've I've, I've consumed enough. At this point, fuck it. Yeah, I've right. I've consumed enough pop culture, uh, this dystopian. Uh, what does that say about generations? Like, what? Real question: Would you bring a kid into this world? <clears throat> Do you want a kid? Uh, yeah. Not right now. Sorry, someone calling me. Oh, I thought that was just a random. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm pretty. Because yeah, someone calling you too. <laughs> no, it's just a timer for nothing. But um, I've always thought about I've I really want kids one day, multiple, and I would like a a family. But where the fuck is the world going to? I mean, but people have been saying that for, for a long, for, for yeah, a long yeah. time. I, I think it just comes down to if you want kids or not. Mm. Scary. Uh, I mean, like, right now, like, my life is not even set up for, like, a significant other, much less a dependent. Shit, if I had a kid right now, he'd be eating birthday cake for two <laughs> weeks, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so it's like, but I think that's one of the, you know, like with fatherhood, like you hear everyone say it, like it's something that no one's ever ready for. You just for motherfucking sure. step up and do it. Yeah. Uh, unless you're like our dads, then, then you just don't do it. You're like, what? Kids? Is that what this little thingy right here makes? I just thought that thing we was my little poly pull well, thing. You can't do this to me. Uh, yo, my, uh, my, uh, lovely ex-girlfriend from high school um she she also has a, a absent father so that's something we be sending each other like memes back and forth about deadbeat dads <laughs> and it's like fucking hilarious dude um that's a good little little bond right there you know what i'm saying like we're like like i told her like yo like my boys i do the podcast with like you know like Right now, like, we're part of the exclusive club where, like, our shit dads <laughs> also fucking die. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, like, it's special. Uh, yeah, it is. Rest in peace, Pops. Rest in peace. You're not, to be honest with you. Uh, let me not go. That's fucked. And this month, bro. This month was so strange. A lot of like, that's the word synchronicities. Oh uh, yeah, I had a had a had to scroll up a little bit, but yeah, she she sent me um uh there's a screenshot from a Facebook post. Bitches thinking pregnant gonna trap me, bitch. I will kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> and then I wrote back. I was like, my dad was like, <laughs> uh, damn. Yeah. So, in your mind, Matt, whenever you're like really, not necessarily a rock bottom, because I feel like sometimes oh. when you hit rock bottom and there's nowhere else to go but up, it actually feels great. I fucking love that Eminem song, Rock Bottom. But, like, when you're about to hit rock bottom, I feel like that's worse because. It takes more momentum to like. She told get me, out of it. "I wonder what our kids gonna look like." Nah, I laugh my ass off. They're gonna wonder what I look like. Did you hear anything I just said? Uh, rock bottom. What you do to get out of it? 
But like, do you feel what I'm saying? So like rock, whenever, have you hit a rock bottom before? Yeah. Yes. Okay. You know how when you hit a rock bottom, the only way is up. Like anything you do, even like cleaning your room or something slight makes you feel so good. Whereas like when you're in the middle, but you're descending, it's, it's harder to like, just be like, all right, let me get the, let me go up somehow. If that makes sense. Man, like there's like like rock bottom is like a four dimensional concept because there's so many different ways you can reach it. Yeah, man, I've had my fucking share. Get off your phone, you're losing focus. Sorry, fuck, I, fuck I, the memes. We're I, past the memes, man. We're past them. Sorry, me, me, memes are my like entire fucking life. I know. Yo, like, like my boy, my boy at work. Uh, shout out my dog Carter. Um, he'll be, <laughs> he'll be like, man, you always on that damn Instagram, man. Uh, he be like, yo, you been working Instagram, and like, and like, I just be fucking scrolling and searching, and like, looking for the best shit. But he, he's, and believe all of my my screen time. You, you do you get the screen time reports at the end of the week. Yo, my screen time be going crazy. That's bad. I, I be like, damn, seventeen hours. That's not good. Putting in work. It's not good. <laughs> My birth dad really did put the dad in skedaddle. <laughs> All right, let me find one more, one more, and please, then, and then one please. more, one more, one more. Fine, let me let me find a good one. Uh, it's just like so many. Like I do this shit. I fucking do this shit. Okay. All right. That might be it. That might be it. That might be it. I'm just fucking like I'm just fucking I'm just fucking deep uh in them shit now. I'm deep. Um All right, I'm out I'm out I'm out of it. I'm out of it. Do you wanna break the fourth wall and just admit to our whoever is viewing <laughs> Shit, I thought you about to give me a Kit Kat. <laughs> whoever is viewing it's one of those situations where we're trying to figure out exactly the direction of where we go every single time we sit down in pod. You have an idea, I have an idea, but it's one of those things where we have to do this for years on end in order to really click. And there's been moments where we click, but lately... Yeah, like lately, so like this year in particular has been uh, a really tough year for me. Uh, I, I, I got thrown a curveball. At the beginning of the year, and it wasn't even like a big deal, like a rock bottom kind of thing, which you were mentioning earlier, which I kind of just skated over that. Um, but and it was it was like not really not a big deal, you know what I'm saying? But somehow, every like all the all right. So let me put it like this: We started the podcast 2021. I was I think it was 2020. Uh, 21 21 Tw like it might have been like yeah it was 21 because this is the second year right two years we're at almost 150 episodes yeah. from shrooms to skyrim with matthew and, and we started the podcast full and, energy and uh, like those especially those first 10 episodes me you and hiram and then you know since then it's been a ton of changes and obviously, you you stepped off to do like uh, to like stuff with music. Well, how and about being the studio? How about we that. be honest about that whole situation? Uh, nah, I, I know what you're talking about, but uh, hold that thought. Okay, love you, dog. Um, hey, I mean, we don't have to go into detail, it's but I got you. About time. And so, like at that time, cause like I'm really. Uh, like one of the one of the things about me is I, I'm a so like a, amongst whatever else I may or may not be I do remember uh, in me you I would I would diagnose ADHD. Um, I I I would never I've never had medication though. Um, which is probably good. And so like I do have a tendency. And, like, also, like, when I was doing this when you were Hiram, and I know Hiram was, like, low, like not like not in a negative way, but he was like, yo, you, you, you probably on that spectrum. 
Cause yeah. he he like you guys are a witness like uh like my neurodivergent tendencies. It's crazy. Like the shit. Uh, Let me not say crazy. That's kind of fucked. It's yeah. No, fuck it. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. It's Kimber. Uh, <laughs> um, like when the when the setup was was in my apartment, just like you like. You like you remember how many times I rearranged the room, bro? It was crazy. And, and there's like so many like inane things, where and it's like, you know, like this speaker placement, it doesn't make a difference. But it's like I had to have it like here. You know what I'm saying? It by, yeah. Like I can't, I can't do this thing over here until like that's fixed. You know what I'm saying? And they're not even you know, in a in um. Is that OCD or ADD? You know, I got, I got a uh, whole, whole, you know, I don't, you all know. the D's, <laughs> <laughs> all of these, all of these, all of these nuts. Uh, you know what I'm saying? A uh, little bit column A, a little bit column B. Um, but it's like, so something about me is like, I have, I have a tendency, I have a lot of tendencies. See, I also have a tendency to like my whole, uh, train of thought is it's like, crazy <laughs> it's fucking okay really imagine someone and, listening to this and you're just like so like uh and like a, a month the uh this is the, problem, like, the thing I, is like so whenever i and it's like dude but remember like it's like I be, it's all good i'll be starting over here and then before I take that first step, and I'm like, hold on, I got bro, act. your fucking brain is it, all the Star like, Wars movies like, at once. It's like I gotta add context so this moment makes sense. So then I take it like, but I go so far over here that it's like, hold on, I gotta fucking loop it back <laughs> over here. And it's like so <laughs> it's long like Pulp Fiction to get back to that point. And then it's like after like ten minutes, like okay, we're only like fucking two percent into this story because <laughs> I had to add so much fucking context. I just get lost in the depth of things. But it's like when we started the podcast, it's like I'm let me just get straight to the point, if that's possible. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking ten minutes later. So <laughs> I haven't even begun to say what I'ma say. Um Oh my god, young man. Kill yourself. <laughs> Kevin! What were you gonna say? <laughs> <laughs> Is it hot in here? It's fucking, it is. I'm, I'm, it's getting uh, hot. I'm fucking sweating. Um, we gotta start leaving the door open, man. Yo, no, because the cat's a demon, bro. For fucking two years, we've been doing podcasts, and the room gets fucking hot. Yo, I you, think it's the energy. I think it's like nervousness. You remember? And, and you remember my apartment? Um, because I had the wall unit AC that was so fucking loud, we had to turn it off for the pod, bro. And I had the the and rotating would, fan that had the would temperature. Get like 95 and when we degrees. started the pod, it'd be like sixty nine. And when we ended, like it'd be like a fucking swana. A swana. <laughs> you remember that? Yeah. And the temperature would be like eighty seven degrees. <laughs> and we were like, yo, like. And we, me and Harvey, would be drunk as fuck, just like sweating <laughs> balls. All right, All right. But what so, were you gonna say? Which I still haven't fucking said. <laughs> it's like. I either do things or I don't do them. <laughs> and by saying that, I said I said nothing at all by saying that. Let, let me explain what I mean. <laughs> um, it's like I'm very. It's like when I when I did the podcast. It's like I it's like when I decided to do it. It's not. It's something I did fully, like I fully committed. Like I don't. I get what you're saying. When I do, when I actually. Do something. I don't do it in half measures. Yeah, right? like, like we were same thing we, with the gym. Same thing with all that shit. Uh, yeah. Like I reached out to someone I know that knew someone. We consulted uh, Marvel Bishop, who already had a podcast, and it was like, like when we started the podcast, it was like episode one. You know, like no background. It's not like we came from like doing radio. We did pretty or TV. fucking. We pretty pretty good bro and fucking like fully produced you know what i'm saying yeah it looked awesome we had great topics even that little game where it's like sean so who is this that was hilarious i gotta say i shined in that moment 
Oh yeah, classic. My stupidity. We were Sean. like, "Yo, do you know who Vladimir Lenin is?" And he were like, "Oh, it's the guy from dude, it's the uh, book. Kill Harry Potter parents. <laughs> he he was not be named." <laughs> um, and yeah, like like that first year. No matter what else was happening with me or with the podcast, uh, we were doing two episodes a week. And I was fucking like on the computer like every day fucking clip. I've made hundreds of clips. Yeah. And fuck so many like ins and outs and excruciating details and and the fucking website and shirts and everything. Like, you know, I was just fucking bomb, 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 bomb. And it was and like and at the time I had that apartment, um, and then the the building owner who's cool as fuck sold the building, so I had another year. And then this company was like, "Yo, we gonna raise the rent, so I'm gonna get up out of there." And it was a good decision because that apartment, if they raise raise the rent, would be bullshit. Yeah, the fucking uh, situation in Miami is like, damn, we already have 50 minutes. All right, we're gonna wrap this up in 10. Um, it's a fucking whole nother fucking Miami. Um, whole nother conversation. Uh. And so then, uh, my I, I had some I had some good friends who had a recording studio in downtown Miami. I really showed the building, and they were doing some shit on another floor in the building with this radio station, two box, and all that. And so then I subletted a room from them, and like the way it happened was like that was like Memorial Day weekend, which is like was a busy weekend for me working in the nightclub. And, like, I was moving my apartment and the studio at the same time. So I was doing, like, trips in opposite directions in Miami. Like, I was fucking yeah, that's taking a, a, long taking a carload to work, like, a whole my whole fucking car, the seats down, furniture and posters and everything and equipment in the back. And then get out of work, like, 5, 6 a.m. And because the studio was, like, near the beach and get off work and go and spend, like, the next hour – you know, take a shit upstairs, the studio, and, like, all that, and we were, and at that time, like, I was so relentless about it, and, like, even with all that, we only, and because I was uh, committed to staying on our recording schedule, and we out, we only missed a week that we didn't record. And my, yeah, we only missed a week, and then everything was up and running, and then from there, like, I was just tweaking the room and getting everything you know, and it was, you know, I was, it was just every week, just bomb, bomb, bomb. Like if, if I was going like out of town or something, like I would record extra episodes the week before to have them lined up and uploaded and fucking scheduled to drop. And then, uh, around November of last year, um, the situation that the people I was subletting from, their situation changed. You know, uh, make a long story short, their situation changed. And so they were no longer going to, they were severing their relationship with the building. So they had the whole floor and I was just getting a room from them. So obviously, uh, so I'm subletting. So obviously if they're <laughs> severing their relationship, that means me too. And I don't know what it was, but it was like at that point, like I was just gonna like give up, not give up, You're but just like tired, I bro. wasn't, I wasn't gonna up to that point. Like I'd been like maintaining, you know what I'm saying? Just maintaining this level, staying afloat. And it was like I didn't even feel like it. I I don't know the way it happened. Like I didn't even feel like maintain no more. It was like because. The place I'm in now is uh, significantly smaller than my two bedroom apartment I had, and there's no room for this setup. And so I was just gonna like I was already thinking like storage unit whatever, and then when I was still in the process of like deciding, that's when you called me and you were like, "Yo." Uh, bring the stuff to my place, we'll do it here, um, and I'll, I'll fucking, like, I'll, like, 
that made me so fucking happy when yeah. I got that phone call from you. Um, there was something about it that made me feel like if I don't jump on this opportunity, this podcast is going to die. And I have a very warm spot in my heart for this pod. And it was like one of the first, not only business ventures, but ventures into the entertainment industry. Because I'm a huge podcast fan. And most of my friends are like, why the fuck do you listen to so many podcasts? And to me, it's because I've used it as a coping mechanism through all like the loneliness and sadness and anger and shit. I listen to a lot of comedy podcasts, Bad Friends, Tiger Belly. Back in the day, I first started with Joe Rogan and the Church of What's Happening Now with Joey Diaz. And I always felt like a part of their clique whenever I'd listen to it. And so I've always wanted to replicate that. And when we first started Shrooms, it really felt like uh, we're bringing people into our clique by showing them like our glimpse of the world because we're not special. We're not fucking comedians. Yeah, I'm a musician. Yeah, I make beats. And one day I feel like yeah, it's, I'm going to be big. It's like most of those people, like they have the podcast, but this person is also a comedian. Also, Yeah, a, and they're well known. Also an actor. Like yeah. they were already this and then they did this. Us were like, no, nah, we're going to give you the average man's conversation. And this is probably what most of you talk about when you're just calling up your homie or shit like that. But I do think we've fallen into this cycle of not being real while we're with each other on the pod. When we, when we, me and you talk on the phone or when yeah, we get it, together it's, in person, it's, been like, it's amazing. It's been like facetious of late. Yeah. It's felt like we have a little barrier and instead of breaking through that barrier and just being like, this is what is happening. We're just avoiding it. And, and so for me, um, so, uh, at that time, so I, I I got what I need to get out of the studio. Um and I had everything boxed up. I brought it over here. And it was gonna be like and at the time it was it was like a busy time at work for me too. So it was like, okay, you know, not this week, but the week after, I'm gonna come over. And yeah, cause you have the um, so you were like, yo, cause I already have uh the desk. You know, cause I do, I have like the uh, the home recording studio. So it's like the podcast situation just kind of fits in. Yeah, it makes a creative space. Se- seamlessly yeah. with what's going on uh, already. And um, also like, I think it's like a cool part of our lore. You know what I'm saying? It was at yeah. my apartment. Then it was over here. And also like, it's interesting when you look at diff- episodes at different times and different locations. Yeah. And so it was like, okay, I'm going a, I'm to a come over the week after and we're going to unpack everything. Because I had that other room, the walls covered with pop culture memorabilia, mostly comic book shit, like wall to wall, like a motherfucking jigsaw puzzle. Like I was, because when I first started the podcast and I was like, man, okay, like, I can't, I see stuff on, you know, like I'm watching people do their thing and they have like, okay, that cool thing, that cool thing. Yeah. And I was like, the things yeah. that pop and out that you remember. Like, and I was like, I want to have cool things too that I love, the coolest things. And then I somehow, the idea got in my head when I was like, there's this much space on the screen. <laughs> Why should I leave white space? It should be all cool shit. Yeah. 100% cool shit on the screen. So, like, my apartment, like, became this insane room. Fucking yeah. floor to ceiling. It was dope. And it was so dope, bro. The studio, I see the apartment looked crazy in person because, and I have, I have pictures, like, most people haven't uh, seen it. Um, but it was like wherever the camera would be pointed, it was just like a a splatter yeah. of of uh you know fucking Spider Man and shit, and then it would just stop. It only made sense on camera. In yeah. person, it looked crazy because it would just yeah, kind of like, like haphazardly <laughs> stop. <laughs> yeah. 
and you know different walls it's like it was so i get what you mean by splatter it's like someone threw up memorabilia yeah, right yeah, there right yeah. in that and then so the studio we had and every I, single i inch. put a painstaking amount of time like the ceiling had one of that that cloud uh leds shit, led cloud shit going on All, everywhere that wasn't on camera had every single the rest inch of the covered. room was fucking floor to ceiling i had that like I, a painstaking amount of time put in literally hours that just measuring shit and you know okay i need something that's fucking 34 inches this way and 13 inches and just fucking looking online for shit that fits the bill ordering shit and fucking uh sticking it up here making it work and fucking cutting shit to make it work the fucking door every fucking nook and cranny do you uh, think but do you think that was your way of let's delve into that first because i i think we haven't spent enough as an hour uh let's go an hour 15 okay and then but generally generally i think that we haven't spent and it's i don't want to say this just to be like one of those people that's trying to be like like this 24 7 we need to do this we need to do this because i don't want to be that person but i really feel like we need to spend more time on like the direction so like for me like what i was saying before like using the speaker example like if this random thing over here isn't right i ha i can't focus on this thing so for me like it became kind of like to an extreme like a trickle down approach where it was like i couldn't think about like until so it's like for me like the first thing that people see is what's is what literally what people see, like what appears on the screen, right? Yeah. And so it's for me like, okay, I have to fix that. Like, and then from there I can like trickle down. Like, but I can't look at anything else until I deal with this first over here. Okay. And so it, like in reality, it's like, yo, like Matt, these are two completely different things like that we can do this at the same time. But in my head, it's like, it's, it's overwhelming. Like, it's like a blocker. It's like, yo. It's overstimulating. Like, I, can't, I can't get over there. Like, I'm right here right now. I'm fucking stuck over here. But, uh, so, like, aside from that, like, the room, like, I had the room fucking, like, people would, would go, because they had, like, a green screen. Like, there was a whole bunch of shit going on on that floor, a whole, like, a creative shit. Uh, they had the radio station, like I mentioned. And so, I'd be there, like, so many people, like, would walk by the room. And it was like this incredible like pop of color and all like so many people were like, holy fucking shit, what's going on in here? Um like I'm like I'm really proud of how that room came out. It was, you know, I had even the, the from the coffee table, everything in that room, like uh it was the room was going fucking brazy. Uh, I forgot where I was going with this. Oh, so <laughs> all that stuff was packed up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dot. <nah. laughs> um, so yeah, the stuff we brought the stuff over here, and and because I was also dropping stuff off, because you know my schedule is fucking weird, and the, so I'm drop. I was like dropping stuff off at like fucking four o'clock in the morning, and like it'd be like outside your door, yeah, and shit like that. It was, bro. It was a wild time when we first started this because we had, I think, especially when it came to you, I feel like you were very um discouraged and it wasn't just from the studio and all this it was like there was so much happening at once because your job when your job needs you your job is very tasking like was, yeah was like maybe i hit some point of like mental burnout or exhaustion yeah. that i didn't even realize at the time because i it's not like like i was i don't think anyone would describe me as a control freak, but not at I, all. I feel like you're very easygoing, but I like, was, I was, you know, I like, I was for the podcast. Like I was and am like in charge of a lot of things. Yeah. And like, like I was saying, like so many hours went into like arranging the room and the decor a certain way. Yeah. And I was supposed to come and do that over here, like unpack things and get it. And, like, you or Yasmin would text me, be like, yo, Matt, when you coming over? 
And then, you know, I'll be like, oh, I can't make it this week, next week. And then you guys will start texting me, oh, we started unpacking, you know, because weeks went by. Well, we started unpacking some boxes. And somehow, like, I just couldn't, like, I, I guess it takes a lot of energy to, like, care, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's like. You probably just lost passion It's a like bit there's so it. much stuff in this room, like, I care about. And it's like how I was saying before, I can either I either do it or don't do it, you know what I'm saying? Did you feel liberated from this podcast when all the shit oh, was Oh, yeah. Here? Oh, yo! What's crazy is when the when I like when the when the podcast stopped, I felt super liberated. Right? It was like this pressure I didn't even know know was there was off of me. Maybe maybe that's what it was. And it was you. It was you deciding whether or not you wanted to deal with this pressure and let something like this come to fruition, or do something else, or just go back to regular life. It's like the pressure was gone in the sense that was like when I was when I was arranging stuff in the room the way I wanted it. And it was like, like with the cameras or something, which I've always been like, I like setting up the shots a certain way. And then like you guys might do something and like, yo, Matt, look, can, uh, we just want to help you out with this. And I'd be like, no, like it, it's not to do with you. It's just like something I want, like I want to do this myself. Mm. And, and so it's like, when you, when you and Yasmin started unpacking the room and it was it was just like it was one of those things where it's like all this stuff that had been like that I had previously uh arranged a certain way you know it wasn't it what was, you expected it was, it was just like oh man I don't know how to explain it it's like It just wasn't what you expected, like what you wanted or anticipated. Well, no, because you wanted you wanted to set it up because there's something fun about redoing everything, resetting this up, going in a new direction, like just the possibilities, you know what I mean? And you probably felt disappointed in yourself for like not being here to do that at first, but then we decided now we're going to rearrange the room to how the the flow needs to be. And we've rearranged this room four times already. First time I did it and me and Yasmin did it. Well, mainly I did it. It was horrible. Well, we kind of came up with the idea of the desk being here, chair inside. Yeah. There. Cause we want to open up cause there's like the, the cam, the camera shot to think about, but also like the flow of the room. IRL. I love it saying, was so I love bad. IRL. <laughs> Cause you want to be able to like, okay, like to have like a uh, suitable walkway, you yeah. know, like you want, you want the motherfucking feng shui uh, to be uh, wavy so that, you know, it feels good when you're in the room, when you go in and out the room. Um, man, it's, it's like, it's, it's like the podcast was supposed to be back in fucking January and we didn't fucking start until like March the end of March or April. Yeah. And like, I remember I saw Carlos on his birthday and I hadn't seen him since December. That, oh, it's 4th of July. <laughs> it's firework. Um, they shooting. <laughs> I made you look, you were slave to a page in my rhyme book. Um, and it was like, cause one thing with me is I fucking lose time like nothing like my to-do list right now for like personal stuff like you know i gotta fucking refinance my car shit and this down the third i got a to-do list that's four pages long no two pages long double-sided so four pages and i got stuff that's been on there for four years wow. and i'm i'm a big you know i'll be letting i'll be like yo tomorrow matt can do that today matt it wants to play uh, video games or just, you know. And you know what I've always done, which is my one of my biggest flaws, kind of similar to that. Instead of taking on responsibility and having something that could possibly help me, either if it's financially or just emotionally, mentally, like hanging out with friends, for example. I'd rather have no friends so that I don't disappoint people when they realize how antisocial and introverted I am. 
And recently, I'd say in the past five, six years, I've been like, no, I need to break out of this, learn how to do certain things, and push myself into the uncomfortable zone in order to have a fucking good life. Like, I want to feel comfortable. Because I'm comfortable right now, but in shit. I I thought that I was going to go. You know what I mean? Are, what? Crazy. Do you know? Do you know how it's easy to be comfortable and in a shitty situation? And the only girl calling me baby. Do you get Just what I'm saying? Me now, put your hands up in the sky. Let me hear you say. I don't know the song you're talking about. Good life, Kanye West. I don't know that song. <laughs> <laughs> I probably do if you played it. But. Uh, from the graduation album. Then I definitely know it if you play. But like, you have a <laughs> shitty fucking. Wake up, Mr. West. Yeah, to be comfortable in a shitty situation, it's, it's crazy what people can be get comfortable with. I've been there for sure. I've been comfortable in the shittiest of situations. Just like, hey, can I sit here and play video games? If I can, I'm okay. Are the cameras still on? <clears throat> Wait, not. but it's, it's time to end it, right? Let's end on a good note, okay? I no, think... I, I was going to ask, do you want to end real quick and then start a new episode? I mean, we could drop two episodes. Like, I could drop an episode tomorrow and one on, like, Monday. Well, now that we're saying it in the... <laughs> I mean, whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to, like, end this. No, but hold up, hold up. And oh. then I'm going to start an episode immediately after. I got to take a... Go take a piss. Maybe we'll be right a back. We don't have no good toilet time. paper. But I'll just hop in the shower when I take shits. Y'all, I remember that time you shake yourself in my car. It was great. <laughs> and you could see it. By the way, you, can- you know which shorts I shit myself in? Those shorts? <laughs> Is there a stain? I think there is. <laughs> I'm never gonna throw him away. She gets so real. She gets so real. Oh! I'm a big man, cake man. I'm in it right now, so we can start right back up. Cause I really don't know how much battery left on the cameras. Heard. <laughs>